We're going to have to make a new gasket. But we're just checking the wiring. And we bought a whole new wiring kit. Yeah, this is spliced off here for all those extra lights he had, I think. To get this fender on, we're going to have to get that wiring through that trough. We got a V-twin wiring kit for this bike. Luckily it came with a schematic. Looks like this is the tail light right here. It's showing two wires in the schematic. Just like what we got here. Flip it over once. Two wires. This fixture must ground to the fender. fender. Because you have to have a running light and a stop light. The little light shines up at the license. We soldered the ends of this wire together. And then I soldered that welding wire together also. See if we can get this uh, pulled through there. Well, we tried to get this factory like wire in there and it's like a cloth sticky waxy type texture. And it didn't want to pull through. So we went to a smooth wire, 14 gauge. And with the solder the ends together and we soldered a welding wire on there. We were able to pull it through, it was quite difficult. Well, if we would have had the wiring in there when we painted, it would have made a mess, but it would have been easier if we had the fender unjointed and gone this far, and then you could go the rest of the wire. But trying to do the whole thing all at once, this was a job. I think that's what we got there. What's going on over here? Well, it's all rusty. You can get these things probably for 30 bucks. Is this an original Harley-Davidson though? I don't know. I mean the USA. I think it might be an original piece. We'll probably just run it. It's going to wire wheel it. I wanted to make a rubber gasket, but all we have is cork. Alright, we've determined that this is homemade. Yes. Look, It looks kind of cool though with the... Fluted. Yeah. It'd be nice to get a new fixture, but... It's pitted. Yeah, we're just going to put it on. That's something that can be changed out at any point. We're going to make two studs like this because they're all torn up and they're they're crummy. And it's easier to... This one is uh, bent even. Right. It's It'll be easier to put the thing on if we got the studs already in here. And then you hold it up and you're reaching underneath and you put the nut on. Otherwise, we're going to be... Fiddle fart and run on a later date. That looks like a brake light to me. Probably the burnt out filament there. It's off our six volt battery. I thought it was goofy that one was angled and one was straight, but it's on the curve. So it goes down. You can see it on here. This is the expensive part of the build where you start buying the parts. Right. All these little chrome trims and the exhaust. The exhaust was all old and rotted out. And that muffler is, it puts a lot of detail on it. It's got the old fish tail on it, like this. The muffler does a little bit of quieting and then when you squeeze it down like that, it quiets it down too. But guess what? I think the exhaust was on the passenger side and they put a sticker on this side. That ain't cool. We're hoping that this chrome breaks up this black stripe we put on here. When you get parts like this that are aftermarket, they don't really fit that good. So it doesn't maintain the contour. If I go Jimmy and I too much and all of a sudden boop, it buckles and I'll be screwed. But I, the other side I ended up moving a little bit. On this side, it, did, it just goes straight. And it should have a little bit more of a curve. That's about it. So then you just slide these little springs down here. Okay, you ready? Yeah. It fixed up that black stripe a bit having this. 
Because most of the times, like, comments were made that when you have a stripe, you should have thin stripes above and below it. But now that we got the chrome there and the black is behind it, that accentuates it pretty good. Got my new bulbs here. It does say they're six volt. You know, buying all this stuff adds up. It'll be interesting to see how much money is in this bike when we're done, but I'm certain it's going to be worth quite a bit more than uh, what was put into it. So both uh, elements work now. We get this fixture soldered up in that uh, housing. I don't want a chance this. I printed up some more wiring diagrams. It looks like red is the one to the switch. This is as good as it's going to get with uh, a little bit of steel wall. There you have it. I don't really like this design. I mean, it's grounding through the fender and you're going through a hinge. So hopefully we got connection. Eventually we're going to have to clean up a little spot, you know, wherever we bolt this on. So we have a good ground on this fender. I don't think we had this piece when we took it apart. Maybe a piece of wire was holding it in or something. That's probably why it ground the gear off. Right. I had to get a bolt too, and uh, luckily somebody will tell me it's a 1024 by a 3 8 inch bolt. I think the bag there. So we yeah. should be able to permanently fix that in now. Another situation where paint got into stuff. We're just cleaning that thread up so the lock bolt will go in easy and we won't snap anything. My kick ass tap set, I happen to have the right one. <laughs> This is off just enough so we can't get that bolt started. So we're going to sandpaper roll to finish off the inside of this. I think we're going to put a smidgen of Loctite on this. Yeah, because there's no lock washer or anything. I'm sure this bike rattles pretty good. <laughs> yeah, there it is. She's turning. So we know the teeth are meshed up. We cleaned up the holes in the frame so our hardware fits through. We're going to go with five bolts to start with. Not really 100% sure what all the stuff is for. But I've cleaned off the top of the frame or the paint. For a grown. In the bottom of the fender for a ground. We're gonna put a little uh, corrosion inhibitor on there. Should be good ground for our taillight. So we got the fender on, just keeping it loose right now, because it's kind of a spring action. You gotta leave everything loose as you're tightening it up. We're just visualizing how this brake goes. And I'm pretty sure that this is gonna go the low road to this arm, something like that. That pins in there backwards, but this is all bent. Mm -hmm. We took this off because it we had it up and it was up in here. It clearly doesn't go like that. We talked about this once before, and to get that axle, actually the frame is tight, so the length of the axle is just measured perfectly, and the spacers are perfect. And you got to get the flats, you got to get the wheel in there. Last time we had to file the paint and stuff, but we had to get the brake lever flipped around. And now that the fender's all connected, we didn't want to move that. It just makes everything even more difficult. There's one guy that was uh, made a comment and he said he bitched all the way through while he worked on his 45. And you can understand why, because they don't put themselves together. It's really frustrating. So as this is spinning, we got some brake drag, but you can see how, you know, now the, not much motion to do it. It's just a little bit and the brake shoes are out touching. And uh, I don't know how much leverage we'll have with that pedal. And then there's a pivot point. Then we gotta have springs that bring it back so you're not dragging the brakes all the time. We ended up doing this, we were gonna go with out the trim but then after we saw that the black needed some accents we're putting this trim on now we got to drill holes so we don't want 
even if we slip, we don't want the drill going across the paint job. I'll hold a body dolly and a center punch and he'll tap so we don't, you know, and once you got a dent started, it won't take off. We've got the same size hole as the, same size drill bit as the holes that were on that fender. Like we showed you before, these little springs just hold the chrome on, they push into there. We made all the holes the same spacing as this. It comes in two pieces. I'm figuring we gotta favor the front and favor the back. And it must have to clearance this area here. You can see what it looks like with the chrome on it. We've got the front fender on. You can see this chrome did have to be spaced away from here. And actually, this fork is probably gonna rub on this fender. I guess it's the nature of the beast. We had to take these rockers off to get the fender up in there. We get her back together, get all our locking tabs on. We'll fold these over in the very end. We'll give it a shot of grease while we can get in there. We brought the rest of the items back out that we're gonna be working on with this bike. Here's that big seat, and we're gonna be using this T-bar. We'll be sandblasting it. We'll get a new seat for that. We're gonna get some new rubbers for the foot boards and things. Yeah, you can't get a hold of these, and this is, attaches underneath the same bolt holes that hold the fender on and then there's brackets on the fender that this bolts to but we might end up having to rebuild this thing making a square box out of sheet metal and just use these brackets probably need some dash components i think we're going to run this original gauge speedometer in there just like that to show how patinaed the bike was is that 12,000 miles? Yeah, it'll be all chrome around it. It's got some color to it now. I think when the gas tanks are on, it's going to look pretty cool. It took us all day, what do you say, about five hours to put those two fenders on? Yeah, you're always taking something on, putting it off, taking it on, putting it off. Yeah, we've got this front wheel all locked down, though. That's pretty much done. Yeah, it'll be cool. It'll be different. When you're done in this thing, you're gonna be sitting way up here. And there's, you gotta use the clutch like this. It's gonna be tricky getting used to that. So you'll see where this piece here goes into here. And we could have a, a more small single seat. This isn't gonna be hauling two people around. That's more contoured and doesn't look like a big police seat. This was called the buddy seat. It had this other spring that clicked into here. We're gonna try and find something that's a little bit cooler. It says right on there, Harley Davidson buddy seat. It's probably actually worth something. <laughs> but we'll uh, give it back to the owner along with the rest of the stuff. So what you see right now doesn't look like all that much, but the amount of hours that go into restoring one of these, just getting all the metal knocked out and straighten it out and get it painted like this. You take it to a restoration shop, it would be like a hundred bucks an hour. And it would be sitting around for years because they got a bunch of these going on. And that's the way this business works. You see guys, we've been waiting for an engine for about a year, haven't we? It's supposed to be done next week, so cool. hopefully we That'll have it. Good. But that's where the big cost goes is the paint, Motor, tranny, bodywork, stuff like that. It just adds up real fast. Yeah, this fender looked like Swiss cheese. I mean, there were holes everywhere, and it actually uh, covered up pretty good, I think. No, I think he'll be happy with it. it looks, it's going to look nice. Here's our list. I mean, actually, we started going through all these parts here, and there's quite a bit of stuff we got to get yet. Once the tanks and this, the engine, the tranny, you know, once it's done, it'll look good.